It's all right. I was going to say, um... All right. Here we go. All right, we should be live now. Everything's working well. Are we live? Should be live. Should be? A little. Not so sure if I'll have to. Maybe there's a delay. Yeah. There. Okay. Hell yeah. There we go. Um, chat's a bit tiny. I think I can work with that. That's all right. So, welcome y'all to Heart of the Blue Bowl, um, which is, of course, the UB local media show where we'll be highlighting various content creator talents, such as our guest here, Excellent. Um, we don't have any... I'm your host, Andrew Wilson, and we don't have any mentions to talk about today, so we're just going to right get into it. So as I said, this is Excellent. Do you want to introduce yourself, or should I? I can do it. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Axelent. Uh I am a YouTube content creator who happens to stream on YouTube, Twitch, and sometimes Facebook, but you know, sometimes the internet can be a little weird. Uh, I make gaming content, entertainment, um, comedy content, eh. and I've, I've been around the block on the internet for a while, so yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to have you. And on a comedy content, I think, I think it is comedy con content, because I think it's hilarious stuff you do. Thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to just kind of ask you some very casual questions, run off of that, um, and eventually we're going to try to link into the topic. I don't think I have it listed anywhere in the title or the chat, but we're going to try to focus on for our like, little analysis topic is going to be inspiration, since I thought um, I, I thought your works were very, um, a lot of interest be looking into inspiration. So, look into that. So, uh, a good place to start is like the whole, like the story of your life kind of thing. Like, you want, um, if you're comfortable going for that, like how you started, how you changed for the years. Um, it's interesting because I actually started in 2015, 2016. Um, I looked very different back then. I 
I thought I thought this was I thought I was streaming, so I was gonna like I'll pull, pull up a picture. But I had you know I clean shaven, I had dyed hair, I had glasses, braces, because I love Markiplier, I love Jacksepticeye, and that was like what I was going for in a very early stage, and I did gameplay. Um, then after that, I was really into history, so I did this little show called Historical Helmets on my channel. Uh, I actually rebranded the entire thing, which probably looking back was a bad idea, but um, I reviewed artifacts, antiques, that got a lot of traction, um, and then I gained a chunk, a good chunk of audience from that, but then I came back to gameplay because I outgrew the history thing and I kind of just wanted to be myself on the internet, and I kind of came back in August of 2021, and I have been going every week and upload or stream since then. And I am very glad that I am back. <laughs> All right. So one of the questions that I'm obliged to ask, because um, one of the main missions of this show is um, kind of looking into across of the content creator experience and the campus life experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it seemed like when you were talking, you, you seemed like you want most of your private information withheld. And I totally understand that. Are you perhaps comfortable sharing any of your, like, um, what your major is and, like, you know, if it um, interacts with your work in any way? Uh, the funny part about that is actually my major, um, I'm a production concentration major. Yeah, so much. For those of you that don't really, that sounds, like, complicated, it's just making films. That's, that's just what that's called. Um, it basically, you know, it's, you learn how to edit, you learn how to make films with professional level cameras. And I actually took the major to get better at YouTube. So I, it wasn't, I didn't put college in front of YouTube. I actually put it behind. I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be a content creator for, that's what I wanna do. So just do go to college for that. Yeah, I totally have a kind of a similar thing. Like, um, I had so many interests when going into media study, especially since I like transferred in for the first year, and I like mainly fell in love with like just one specific class of like um. There's a like a VR class where you can just like make 3D worlds. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not. I haven't joined it yet, but like, you know, that that was my top ideal in going here via unrealistic, and then I just kind of followed in, um, and just stuff like this. Just like, I, I yeah, with that I've grown to love like media community and stuff mm -hmm. so um tell me this is a bit off um off path but like is there any interesting um games you plan to make um like you plan to i uh, sorry play um it's weird because the way i pick my games it's kind of a mix of what I saw when I was young, but also what's out. So, actually, I really want to play the Amnesia series. Um, I played that a little bit at the beginning of quarantine. I streamed it, but then I kind of fell off because I didn't want to be inside during the pandemic. I wanted to be outside. So, I scrapped that, but I want to go back to it and make a full-on series. I also want to do... Um, there's a few FNAF games I haven't touched upon. Because I got so frustrated after security breach. Have you have you heard how 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 weird? Yeah, I, I was watching through one of your recent uh, security streams, and I and I saw like you know, and I've heard like because I was um, a fan of security breach, just how glitchy that game is. It's... It, I got context. True ending. Never won. You've probably seen that where it just doesn't win. Um, I haven't touched on Ultimate Custom Night or Pizza Race Simulator on my own. So I want to get that, but I also want to do, um, I want to play non-horror games. Um, I want to play Stardew Valley, I've heard really good things about. Yeah, I love Stardew Valley. Um, I, what, I want to do like a bunch of other stuff, like, um, I have a Minecraft series that I haven't really touched upon in a long time. Um, it's kind of just like, I want to do games that I saw when I was a kid, but also like games that are coming out. Yeah, I really appreciate that answer because I was trying to. I was about to follow up with like, um, I'm really interested in like, like the selection process for that. Like, if you just go like, oh, I feel like playing some Halo or something, or if you actually kind of take some like, 
streamer consideration of like oh what would the fans want is that on brand like i don't know if you have like a certain brand for the channel aside from the aesthetics you use mm -hmm. um yeah but it's interesting to see like you try to refer to uh you know kind of your past um inspirations i suppose mm -hmm. if i'm getting correct here yeah yeah so i was trying to trying to look at this with the intent of like um you know the whole inspiration thing i was trying to ask uh oh like the, the top markiplier jacksepticeye if they have and they seem to very well have uh influenced uh how you go about your channel um is there any other like factors that they have affected any other um types of inspiration or any other sorry inspirers honestly with my channel specifically um mark was the main inspiration but then unisonis came around and that kind of changed how i looked at content creation forever yeah. Would you mind going through Unis Honest a little bit? Because I, I, I had absolutely, I've never looked into Unis Honest. I had no time to look in um, for the research of this show, this episode, I mean. Um, so could you go through that a little bit? Just to give some context. Okay. Unis Honest, basically, made by Markiplier and his friend Ethan of Crank Gameplays. Um, they made a channel with the intention to delete it after one year. Unis Honest in Latin literally translates to one year. So every day they made a video, and then after that one year, they live streamed twelve hour live stream reviewing the channel, uh, fan art, all that, and then just deleted it off the face of the internet. Not like stopping content creation, not re-uploading it, complete like deletion. You cannot find anything. Only re-uploads, archives, and other things like that. Yeah, so so that it's, uh, that, that makes more sense why why the end because I've seen uh, you do have a video about it and I've seen so many people talk about it too why the end of Unus Anus was so monumental because it was a planned end and a, a kind of breakup. Well, so um yeah, does that like uh, how has that inspired? Like, has it affected your aesthetic? Because I did try to say you do seem to have quite an um like a consistent and a beautiful aesthetic. You use a lot of vaporwave in your uh, pre stream and your banner. I mean, it's it's very it's in my in my content aesthetic. I follow the vaporwave aesthetic, um, like just the way I advertise and the way I portray the online personality is vaporwave. Because to me, I just I just really like it. It actually came from Pyrocynical. I discovered it through Pyrocynical, um, which commentary channel for those who don't know. This whole thing was early. Vaporwave, you know, sampling and pinks and the pastels and all that. Neon. And visually, I just love it. I love the music. Uh, I was one of the ones where in high school I would just listen to Vaporwave and act real sad. So, you know, that, that was just my vibe. Oh. I think we're getting, yeah, I think we're getting a question in chat here. Chat? Yeah, uh, we have Jacob Balia asking, um, what are your comedic inspirations? Like, who do you model after your online character persona after? Markiplier. Markiplier. Um, well it's, it's weird because, m like, people change throughout their entire career. Like, I have, on my channel, I have something called the Ar Excellent Archives. And it's old videos that I deleted that I re-uploaded. So, it's me from 2016. Young me. Um, 13, 14 year old. So... Blue hair, purple hair, glasses, all that. And I, c I mean, com comedic inspirations. Mark's style of comedic editing um, was a big inspiration. And also his editor, Lixian, big, com big inspiration for me. But when it comes to, like, the way I talk and the way I present jokes, it's very dry. It's very much old school, um, old school comedy where it's like, no, there's really, you can't really tell what the punchline is. You just kind of say something and then you go into post-production, tidy it up. So, yeah, I, I feel like I did see a lot of that, like, especially in the, your most recent video, which I was very impressed by the, um, I believe it's called this entire video is edited, which for those who haven't seen it yet, it's, um, an Unus Anus unedited video with, um, 
an homage type edit completely done by you and it takes all the comedy to like doubles it mm -hmm. um and it, yeah it's really interesting to see um it's, it's you made a comment how like not only is your comedic style inspired by markiplier but your editing style too and that's really interesting um any more comments about that the way it's with editing the way i see it is a language because whenever you take something and you strip it down or you manipulate it you are changing the way it's seen so when it comes to video and audio you can make an entire joke just by editing but it is it can get very tiring so that video took me like about a collective 10 12 hours to edit and it, it looked very short but it's because i took every minute to edit that like into such consideration because i want it to be perfect yeah that is definitely uh very noticeable like how much time you took into it and actually interesting i, I was interested in asking um i had prepared so you say um i i did try to review your q a video mm -hmm. it's kind of definitely interesting there was one question um as how many how much um time you took to edit a video and i believe you said like an average of three to four hours per video mm -hmm. um and i i'm definitely interested in seeing this for each um creator i'm gonna get on here but like um how does that affect your weekly like um how much time do you put into it a week is there any other factors besides from editing and streaming that take up time as your uh content creation oh definitely um usually the three to four is what i try and shoot for that's usually not what happens um with school it takes up a lot of time and of course with me because i put my creative stuff first and my academic stuff second which can shoot myself in the foot yeah um i it, it's weird because depending on the week i can get one or two videos out minimum i try and get one out because i will literally feel like garbage if i don't get a video out um and i'm actually it's like a pavlovian response or if i don't have a video out i literally feel my like i feel like i'm doing something wrong um so usually depending on schoolwork depending on if I'm feeling motivated, if whatever. Honestly, if I don't feel like making a video, I'll stream it and save the VOD and I'll edit a thumbnail and that's the video for the week, so. Yeah, I definitely uh, feel like I don't have too much evidence, but definitely feel for like the kind of, um, like, you know, artist, content creator, like, uh, I might, I guess it could be called like a standard quality standard of like, uh, you know, if I, if I do an art thing, it has to be like, well, maybe not exactly the point, but like, you know, have to I apologize I'm losing the words here Is there? Um, but like yeah I totally get the how much like time you want to put in like just to make pieces good like I how if I could talk about the show for a second like even just like the, the preparation process of like the first stupid episode and this episode like I've been trying to treat this as a kind of a casual thing, like, okay, people can just come in and talk, I'll make some notes of, like, whatever um, topic and whatever um, mentions creator, like, creators in the mention section, and then just kind of go off about that for, like, 30 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, th then I find myself, like, for like for this week especially, like, I just want to make it look really good, like, I want to get this whole list about, like, a super concentrated, cohesive theme, get all the editing out of the way. Definitely did not get all the editing out of the way because I have not prepared much. Like, uh, I was complaining, oh, I totally forgot uh, much of the thumbnail and description. I'll pull that in later. So, I, sorry, I apologize to anyone watching right now. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. I will leave in, mainly, I will leave in a lot of links to Excellence uh, channels. If you haven't seen Excellent before, I'll definitely have that in, like, shortly after. So, stay tuned for that. Um, by the way you can call me axel all right i'll say axel's my actual name yeah I, I, so just i it, believe yeah i know i i mean i apologize for that i i did mean to call you axel like i did refer to you as axel a couple times in text but just totally wiped out um here's like it, Axel is you, you can kind of guess what my name is just just by my username yeah. so <laughs> I actually did want to say I love that name pun like I, I love puns like that it's oh it's 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 from Xbox Live like 2014 it's nothing <laughs> but it's like a perfect 
kind of thing. I don't know. Well, not perfect for me, but like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a pun guy. I enjoy it. I'll admit it. Hmm. Well, while I try to refresh myself on some of the questions I wrote down, how about we go into some of this uh, inspiration topic that mm-hmm. we've prepared? Uh, like, yeah, I think as trying to go in later, like, oh, what, what inspires us? Um, maybe it's t- um, we can kind of analyze with the chat and with ourselves, just like some aspects of inspiration. An interesting question I had that I didn't really have any time to help answer for myself is like, I I personally see inspiration as this huge like like this is like universally positive whether like it's a subliminal or a direct inspiration thing Mm -hmm. as this like universally positive influence do you think inspiration could kind of negatively affect or like harm some content or the creator even oh definitely um it's it's one of those things where inspiration there's a line between inspiration and um, imitation and inspiration can quickly turn into copying really quickly if you are not careful um i am i was gonna say i am i can say 100 percent. it took me a while on youtube and twitch to figure out that i had to take pieces of content creators that i liked and then trans and then use those instead of taking basically entire personalities and entire styles and trying to for, put a square peg in a round hole and until it fit. So it's just one of those things where if you get too much in here, yeah. you, you just kind of keep going and going and going until eventually you don't have your own voice, even if you think you do. That's actually a very good comment that works. Like, um, that's actually a very good point because I, I also mean to ask, like, um, you helped me figure out, like, uh, well, I guess we already did. I was like, oh, um, because I I've had a personal experience, several personal experiences for once. Where like, you know, I know a lot of artists could get um so worried, hyped up about oh, am I being inspired? I I can see a connection with my content and this piece of content. Um, am I just ripping them off, or am I being inspired? And I know there's a lot of people worried about that. So. Maybe you can try to figure out together, get kind of like a line and just, you know, mm-hmm. how we can help identify for people like, oh, where inspiration ends and plagiarism begins. Yeah. The thing is, is with plagiarism, it's one of those things where it's like, well, plagiarism on the internet is, is as common as sand in the desert. Um, yeah, definitely. <sighs> A really good example I can only think of right now is um, if you see, you ever see the family YouTubers? Fam- oh, like the family shows, like oh, uh, like the Ace I, Family. Yeah, oh, I don't want to. It's, it's like oh yeah, we're a happy family, and then you know it's yeah. really just boring kids around behind the scenes. Uh, like that type of thing, but also Mr. Beast clones. Oh. You can see uh, Pyrocynical did a video called "The Russian Mr. Beast," and it's literally you can see the thumbnails are the exact same. It's just slightly altered with the guy's face. So plagiarism for YouTube is one of those things where if you take it's even now it's like having a hard time trying yeah. to fully explain it. Are you taking like like a direct? I feel like I know the word you're trying to get here. I can't get it either. Like, are you taking an I like are you taking an idea and doing it with your own personality, or are you just doing the video? And that's what happens when people play games, like doing a, like Let's Play. Like, if, when you do a Let's Play, a lot of times you might hit the same beat, and then you react the same way. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I'm, I'm coming to it now, like, maybe a good question is, like, how you consider it with, like, language, because, like, I feel like, kind of, if you want to say, like, you know, language is all relative, so don't take the exact words, but, like, you know, if you think, like, oh, I want to do what they do, mm-hmm. is essentially, like, oh, I want to be them, I want to... And that's, you know, that's not really, I want to use, there's part of, like, I want to have this attribute of them. That's more inspiration type. Mm-hmm. How about we take a little break? Because I think I'm re- I think I'm seeing some more um, questions in the, the chat. Chat's, chat's blowing up right yeah, now. Yeah, chat's, <laughs> we're getting some nice chat here. Uh, all right. Uh, Fia says, what kind of content do you want to put out? Anything different or new? 
Well, recently I've actually been doing a lot of IRL content, um, and which has been really like a nice breath of fresh air because when you keep playing games, you kind of box yourself in. And um, I really want to do like more IRL like comedy review stuff. So like reviewing every kind of this is th this is where the whole players and talk starts to come in. Um, I different every kind of chip, every kind of like every kind of insert brand here. Um, or I, this is, this is where we get into like the weird stuff. A lot of the video ideas I have are based off of what's popular on YouTube. Like the style of video. Like there is a, there's no Chuck E. Cheese around here anymore. And since, since this is a Buffalo based channel, I can say this, the one Chuck E. Cheese that was around here is gone, but there's one 30 minutes away. I want to do a whole video going to that Chuck E. Cheese. And that's the entire video. Love it. Like just a stupid idea. Stupid ideas. Yeah, uh, you definitely. I, 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 from like the the two IRL IRL videos I've seen, the hundred, uh, videos and the Q and A, you definitely seem to do it well. So, I definitely say, you know, um, how how do you feel about making those videos? Like, um, do you feel more free to do? It seems like yeah, sound like you're more free to do it. Um, it's weird because editing is a different beast when it comes to IRL videos. Um, doing gameplay, it's weird because doing IRL videos, it makes me feel like the gameplay videos are more, a little bit more lazy because you just play a game and then you upload it. So with the IRL videos, you have more freedom to manipulate sound and you can do more visual gags. But with games, you either edit the game or you edit your face cam. And there's really no... There's really no room to wiggle. It's very odd. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I've never really um, thought much about all these different editing styles, so this is really um, amazing for me to hear, so I gotta thank you for that. Let's see if there's any new questions here. So, let's see. All right, Ray Turpin seems to ask, will you do any content other than gaming, like your original historical helmets? Um, I think it might have just answered that one. Thing is, re review stuff like going back to historical helmets. It's very. It's much more research based. Sure. Historical helmets. I had to do a lot of research, and although it pay off, as I was doing those videos, I was actually feeling myself burn out every time I made a new one. And what people don't talk about is burnout. Yeah. Like what? Like when it comes to making us specific type of video every single time even if you think you know it just making that that video takes the creative spirit out of you a little bit i mean i will pr I, maybe i'll do a review of like a game or like i like a lot of music maybe an album thing but i much prefer just being being a silly man on the internet who doesn't take anything too seriously so yeah it's definitely good to avoid that burnout when you can let's see oh here's a nice one uh, Fia asks, again, any goals you have with the channel? Like, uh, what does the future look like for you and your content? Really, just to keep going. Um, just to keep going? I had a goal of a thousand subscribers at the end of the year. Um, but that is if, that is only if the audience is willing to pay attention. So, my audience is, I, they, it's, it's a, it's a very symbiotic relationship. It's, I give them content, and then they give me the attention, and they give me, like, the love and support, and I really want to expand my audience, because I feel like I really want to help people, I really want to do charity live streams, I want to do all this other stuff, but it's just a matter of getting the name out there, and um, just making sure people know that I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel uh, like uh, this. That 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 goes really hard with this new show thing. Like, um, you know, I have all these goals in mind, all these new wings and like, um, specialties to this that I wanna re that I really wanna implement. Mm -hmm. But I just gotta wait and let you know let it all build up first, kind of like the goals. So I definitely feel that. Let me see if there is any new questions because we're definitely lagging behind here. Um. All right, we got Meg asking, how do you balance doing what you want and what does expect you to make your content? You do seem to be very um, yourself focused on your content, which I really appreciate. Um, 
You got any points on that? Um, what's the question again? Word for word, uh, we have, how do you balance doing what you want and what others expect of you when making content? Oh, okay. Um, funny part is, no one asked me to do a specific kind of content. <laughs> um, I have not really had any requests, which is interesting. That's surprising. Um, I think cause it's just kind of the way I make videos. It's very much like, they just kind of appear. There's no like build up to anything. The only the only piece of content that's had any build up was my Unisonis video that I, that like the latest one. Um, I went completely dark on on like my Twitter. I changed all my my bio and my profile picture, and then I like did posts that start to amp up and hype it. Um, I mean, when it comes to my content, it's mostly how am I gonna react to something like a like a game, like hor horror. The comedy is the reactions. They're basically reaction videos. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of one of those things where as a creator, because when you're a creator, you're a performer. And you need to be in the right headspace to perform. And if you feel really down or really drained, your content's going to suffer. And that has happened before because streaming. I found that out with streaming. Yeah. Okay, geez, I'm really going to have to... Um get this text bigger for next week because especially for all the lighting it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. We had an interesting thing with the lighting. We're using um, the Silverman recording series actually and apparently today of all days they've had a freaking lighting outage for like parts of the building. So the, the like specific parts that we need. Yeah <laughs> so we have to use these super bright lights and it's sure. torture under my eyes. All right let's see. Ray's asking, when can we see more of your character impressions? Character impressions? Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Oh. Um, sometimes I just do voices, like when I stream. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen any of those from when I've watched. Um, I mean, it's, it's really like when I'm super stressed, or like if I'm like in like a really... Like when a game, if it's like you're in a multiplayer, and you start to um, like get shot at, and you start to panic... I'll just start breaking out into, like, voice. There's random impressions. I mean, it's not really a piece of content. I'm. It's not really part of my whole shtick that I'm going to really focus on. It's, just, like, a natural stress waiver. It's naturally, It's It's really just going to be like, oh, that's a bit. Like, uh, oh, there it is. Like, it's not going to be a, a focus. Yeah, you just kind of... I just kind of do go it. Go for when your mind pops off. Yeah. Spontaneous. I get a lot out of myself. All right, okay. We're finally caught up with this next question, and I can continue on. Um, Jacob is asking, what will your dream collab and your nightmare collab, aka the latter being someone pointing a gun at you and making you work on a video with the person you want to release? So, yeah, about collabs. Any interests for that? Like, oh, God. Dream collab? Um, honestly. Well, obvious. Mark. Markiplier. Markiplier. <laughs> Uh, Ethan of Crank Game plays those two because as a dynamic of, of a duo, of a comedic duo, they complement each other so well. Um, honestly, Mark Ethan, Pyrocynical, um, just... Oh God, I feel like there's one more. I guess that's it. Uh, the, the Dream Collab, Mark or Ethan or Pyrocynical. Uh, those are my three. And for my nightmare collab, um, here's like I have I have some strong opinions on a select few YouTubers who, honestly, rice gum, the nightmare nightmare scenario. If I, you okay, you could not get me to collab with him, even if there was a gun to my head. I I I, I can't stand him. It's 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 so bad. He's so, it's. I have so many opinions. Yeah, I think I've heard of rice gum. What's his deal again? Oh, what's not his deal? Um, he did diss tracks back with, like... Do you uh, remember like the, the whole Leafy is here type diss tracks? Well, do you remember the Content Cop stuff with iDubs? Oh, I do remember that. The last Content Cop he did was on Rice Gum. Um, and he was worse than Jake Paul, which is hard to be. Um, Rice Gum basically did diss tracks. He made his entire YouTube career off diss tracks. Um, he did a bunch of, like, racy, racy stuff. 
Uh, he did jokes that were really offensive, like and not like, not like the jokes where it's like, oh, like people who would, would you say something to get like a reaction. It was like legit, like really bad. Um, and he, I actually don't know what ha- had happened to him after the iDubs video. I think he kind of went radio silent and he just kind of stopped making content. But he was really egotistical, um, really, really just like arrogant, not not good at all. God. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, there's two extremes on in YouTube. You're either an angel or you're the absolute worst human being in the world. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely... It's very hard to find a middle it's, ground. Yeah, it's definitely hard to find um, some stuff like that. Have you done any, like, collabs previously? I haven't seen any from what I've... I actually collab very often with, um, with a few people. Um, I'm part of this YouTube group. Uh, called the core four and it's me and it's my three friends um esco the demigod x hood and it's blue and they are probably my best internet friends uh we did um we usually stream together uh or record but with me i'm kind of the one that doesn't usually record the collabs i kind of just i kind of participate but don't record it because i'm like trying to like figure out scheduling for my own videos but we did a speedrunners video together about a month or two ago, and uh, uh, yeah, I th- them. But also we're part of a larger group, so I've collaborated with um, a guy by the name of Electric Wiz. Uh, it, I think it's I, his name's his name's Ryan, but I, I don't remember his username because I'm trying to plug I'm trying to plug him so that they get some love. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of giving some love, I guess we'll just do another freaking plug here. Um, if this is your first time seeing Axel, Axel God, um, definitely I will have links up. If you can't find him um, right now, I'll have links up later. Definitely go check out some of his videos. I had uh, quite a nice time watching his stuff. Um, we technically have passed for our 30 minute time. I'm not sure if you'd care to go further on. I don't know if you have anything planned after this. Keep going. All right, we're continuing. Um, Want to go back on the inspiration thing? Look more at it? Hmm. Can't quite remember um, any other points I had. Um, you definitely. I, I definitely have heard of some great inspirations from you today, like your um, editing style. Um, I, I do want to get towards like general considerations, uh, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, your editing style, your uh, whole presentation. Hmm. I was going to say, um, you want to talk about like trying to find creators at UV? Oh, yeah. Um, that is going to be an interesting journey. Because, yeah, a part of this show is like, just having the show itself is trying to, it's like one out of many efforts because I have so many mission, like missions or whatever to show. It's like just kind of sent out a ping because mm-hmm. I said in my, um, in my intro episode, like there's, I, I have found so many outlets of the community, but I just don't feel like there's any connection, like where you can find them all. Like, you know, like there's probably, there's definitely whole other pockets that I haven't even seen yet. So like, um, yeah, I have I have definitely have um gotten a lot more um new creators under my wing. I have that I'll definitely try to get on contact later. Um I definitely am going to there's some upcoming events that's going to help uh, um the show and me um find some new creators that is um i think i don't know if i've mentioned this anywhere but the next two weeks are gonna be um about events on campus for the next week of this video we're gonna have a review of the bear point film festival which for you don't for those who don't know there the screening is like wednesday night in the student union i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be all um schmoozing and stuff and I'm definitely gonna take in the, like both local and non-local film submissions, and I'm gonna 
you know, give um, my reviews and analysis. And then next week, there's going to be the UBCon. Haven't bought my ticket yet, so hopefully they're still open. Um, I don't know where that is, but yeah, like April 8th, which should be the week after, is going to be UBCon, and there's going to be all kinds of different artists tabling. Um, and I'm definitely also going to be there. I'm going to give a review and try to talk to anyone who's willing to talk about their artistry. Um, definitely is interesting. Um, you have any questions or anything, or should I just keep rambling? I was going to say, um, in the first episode of, of this show, you said there was a pillar. I forgot the way you phrased it. Oh, yeah, it. I, I said some, like, uh, like pillars of the, because there's, like, pillars of the community, and I listed some pillars, like, you have the Student Association Clubs, the Creator Space Discord, mm -hmm. um, Subject Media, which, yeah. for those who don't know, that's, like, a, a student-run empire that just has a whole bunch of shows under its wing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, interesting connection, if I may continue. Um, one of the shows under subject media, um, specifically subject radio, is actually one of my friend's shows, which actually kind of inspired me, since we're talking about inspiration, and it inspired me to do um, the show, which I, I figure I talk about. So, um, I assume Jacob is fine enough with me talking about this. Um, if not, I'll give him a quick second to see if he's cool with this or not. Um, but like, yeah, it's interesting because like, yeah, I, I, this is my first year on media study and it's been like taking up, giving me all kinds of like, um, impressions and stuff. And I had a really interesting tipping point when it came to the show with, um, I'm assuming it's cool to talk about it now, Jacob's Jams, which are, um, it's like Fridays at six. My friend Jacob does this, um, he does this radio show where he gives um, some, like, he, he, he's a big music guy, and um, he gives, like, a whole bunch, he plays a whole bunch of uh, music songs that he likes, and has some, what I find to be personally, um, super funny skits, and, um, oh, yeah, he's plugging, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and um, it was just, like a one week last month with Jacob's Jams that I was so impressed that like he's not much of a media guy which I, I think is one of the more important points like he's not much of a media guy but he just loves like he, he's engineering I believe mm -hmm. you know because he's going to work in engineering in the future but he just loves music so much that he wants to do the side thing of the radio show and I thought that was so interesting so I figured oh I kind of want to start my own side thing to just to do a radio voice or whatever yeah and kind of um, yeah, that rolled up into this, which is definitely much bigger than just doing a radio voice. Yeah. Um, it is kind of just an interesting case study of how, um, can I interview Lee? Yeah, hopefully I will be able to interview, um, Jacob in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting camp, uh, example of just how inspiration comes from all kinds of different ways. Any, I'm sorry. Uh, any points? Because I'm not sure. Um, I was gonna say one of the one of the an interesting thing is is um, living on campus versus off and how that affects content creation. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely cannot wait to do that as like a topic one day because I when my prepared list is all kinds of like oh the, um, advertise on on campus stress of work busyness of work. Um. Oh yeah. The, um. I'll get to that question in a second, but we did see it. Uh, yeah, so, and I, hopefully I will get to explore with everybody just how all, like, you know, this exploration of content creation on college and, you know, specifically in Buffalo as well. Mm -hmm. So let's take a moment out of the whole inspiration talk to answer Douglas's question. Do you have any plans for editing for the music industry? Right, honestly, right now? I'm really not looking at, um, this is a weird thing to say, because I'm, I'm contact, I'm a freshman at, at UB, um, 
so I really haven't had the opportunity to think about professional gigs I might want to do. Um, but maybe one year or like one day when the time arises, if I get hired, if I get hired to do something, I'll edit anything. If I get hired, I'll get hired. But it just depends on if right time, right place, like if I am called, then I will do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is related. Like, uh, you know, your Instagram page does say you're an editor for hire. Mm -hmm. um, has that taken you anywhere that you're like allowed to talk about? Like, doesn't break any, um, what's it called? Uh, it's, t it's, it's given me a few connections and that's really all I can say. <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's best to keep this stuff private. Um, all right. I suppose we'll kind of shift a little back into inspiration and then maybe we'll find to close this off. Mm -hmm. Um, it is quite nice to do, um, Jesus, I just saw my, lost my train of thought. I said, do you want me to ramble until you find it? Because I can. Um, start rambling. I'll see if I can okay. get something like that. Oh, your battery is running low. <laughs> oh, sh yeah, I, I thought my battery could make it. Um, yeah, well, it's good we're, we're on the latter end of this. How much... How, can we, oh, like, can we close this off? Or is, is it going to die on us midstream? Let's see if I can get the thing. All right. Start rambling while I uh, do some emergency solving. Oh yes, really, really well. Uh, hi, it's it's me, your boy. Um, not not your boy. Um, Andrew, Andrew's your boy. Um, so I hope you all have enjoyed this. Uh, this is it's it's a little it's interesting because like with UB um, as a college, it's more of a science college. And trying to find content creators like on um on campus is weird because we it's as if we don't all exist in a bubble. Like we exactly. we it's I cause um there was a flyer for the show in it wasn't was it Knox? It was Knox. Um in Knox Hall on a bulletin board near the lecture halls. And I saw it and I was like, oh dear god, there's more there, there's people who actually do content creation? <laughs> Like yeah. I, I have, I fall semester never once found anyone who did like YouTube or Twitch or anything, because we don't go outside. <laughs> we none of us a actively like advertise ourselves in real life. Because why would you? So yeah, I didn't want to say because I've been thinking about doing like an a whole ad like advertising on campus, but not all like content creation. Like probably only like twenty percent being generous is like is something people would want to advertise on campus because like um i believe stuff like you and a lot of other people are more preferred to like despite being on campus they like to be you know a not like anonymous and um you know just kind of be more general worldwide audience mm -hmm. and um yeah i guess it is worth noting if anyone is a content creator who does like to be anon anonymous I would like to remind you that I would definitely love to mention you or highlight you on the show, but I'll, I'm will i going to do my best to respect your anonymity as long as you're fine with being associated with Buffalo. That's all you really need. Uh, can I actually say something about Buffalo? Go ahead. Um, I said this to, I was helping someone set up a YouTube channel, and I was talking about how the algorithm works and how culture is kind of like, how culture and like, geolo like geography is kind of seen with the whole thing of YouTube. How if you act like you you're not from anywhere, it and if you're more of like a global citizen, and you act like you're from you could be from anywhere, you you're more likely to be. It feels like you're more likely to be successful. Or if if you say that, or you could say you're from L.A. or New York City, and the same thing could happen. Um, I don't know. It just feels like um, like the only really big YouTuber from around here is Jenna Marbles. She's from Syracuse. Really, I've not. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you wouldn't expect her to be from Syracuse, but I'm from yeah, I'm from Syracuse. I've never heard of um, Jenna Marbles. I do know there is a big name Let's Player um, that I do know like lives in Syracuse. I'm not sure if he's like you know publicly announces that he lives in Syracuse, so I kind of keep that hush. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I think one like the the biggest content um, the, the the biggest public 
content creator that I found out of Buffalo, or at least a student out of Buffalo, is hopefully I'll get her on the show one day. Um, is this one um, music artist, Liao, at like 5,000, um, I think 5,000 Instagram subscribers. And yeah, she, she does some amazing work. Hopefully she'll go far. Did you know Keemstar is from Buffalo? Really? Killer Keemstar is from Buffalo. Hmm. And he left to go to L.A., because of course he did. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, it's... I think it's from Keemstar is from Buffalo. Here's the... Well, I feel like careers from Buffalo have an uphill battle because if Keemstar is from Buffalo, we all have an uphill battle trying to like purge the name of like, oh yeah, we can't be we can't be the people who came from where Killer Keemstar came from. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh yeah, like I I think that there's probably some like more, a few alumni that's like stuff, but like they're not really known as being from this place. Like yeah, I'm having the damnedest time remembering. I I feel like I have some names, but. Well, hopefully, Mission of the Show, we'll find out. We'll find alumni, we'll find oh, yeah. um, locals, um, mainly students, and we'll do that. I think it's good time to end uh, next week. Okay. So, yeah, this has been the um, second episode of The Heart of the Google. Um, I got to thank you to all who's watching live or offline. Make sure to check out Excellent. His stuff is in the description. Um, stay tuned for the next two weeks. Um, I will be doing an episode on the Bear Point Film Festival next week and Ubicon um, the week after. I will be there, so come say hi, come talk to me. Um, thanks for watching, and I believe...